Oh, hold tight. I can't stop shaking, Howard. I know. It's like being pressed up against a young gazelle. <laughs> <laughs> Two brandies, please. Yes, sir. Large ones. I couldn't thread a needle. Don't worry, Hilda. No one's going to ask you to. <laughs> Who would have thought, when we woke up today, it was all going to turn out so horribly? Indeed. I feel a bit ashamed of myself, actually. I should have stood my ground, shouldn't I? Oh, you would have done if you hadn't had me to worry about. You'd have thrashed that beast within an inch of his life. Your faith in me is absolutely blind, isn't it? <laughs> I sincerely hope so. Thank you. Keep the chain. Yes, thank you, sir. Come along, Hilda. Come yes, sit down and have some of this. There you are. Howard? Yes, dear? I don't like brandy. <laughs> it's not to drink, it's just to swallow. <laughs> oh, I see. I've been waving at you. Hello, Howard. Hello, Howard. We're playing shove, Hackney. Would you like to join us? Mm. We're not up to shoving anything at the moment, Martin. <laughs> Something terrible happened. Oh, what? Someone took a shot at me. Oh, Hilda, how awful. Where? We were in some woods. Seeing how many different kinds of leaves we could collect. <laughs> So what happened? He jumped right out in front of us on the footpath. Well, who did? A farmer. Driven to madness is my guess by the EEC. <laughs> he didn't mention the EEC. He just said that we had no right of way. And we did, because Howard was sure it was a footpath. And what's going to happen when Turkey joins? There'll probably be a kebab mountain. <laughs> or a yogurt lake. Well, uh, can we just stick to one topic for the moment? Uh, yours, presumably, Harry Limelight. Oh, Hilda's. Now, Hilda, you said someone took a shot at you. Now, did they or didn't they? Well, I I'm not actually saying a shot was fired. But he had a gun, though. <laughs> was the gun pointing at you, Hilda? Well, not in so many words. But he was carrying it over his arm. The gun was broken, wasn't it? How can you say whether it worked or not? <laughs> oh, broken, Martin, you know. Carried over the arm. Made safe when not in use. All right, come on, Howard. Was it broken or not? Look. Perhaps we haven't described the incident precisely. Well, I think that's an understatement. All right, then, Anne. You stand there and get shot at. We just established that you weren't. Well, it felt like it. <laughs> Come on, Hilda. You're going that colour again. Let's get you home and loosen some of your clothing. <laughs> Thank you, Howard. Oh, good night, Howard. Good night, Howard. Good, good night, Hilda. Good night. Take it easy good now. Night. Thank you. Night, Hilda. Have a good lie down. Sorry to have been so hysterical. Oh, not at all, old man. Well, talk about a storm in a teacup. Mm. Oh, someone's got the shove hate me board now. Oh. Well, call me old-fashioned, but in my book, shove hate me comes a poor second to human rights. Whose human rights? Howard and Hilda's. They have been refused their human right away along a public footpath. Doesn't that incense you, Anne? I couldn't care less. What? Well, as far as I'm concerned, it's just a ridiculous argument between three people in a field. Absolutely. Shows how much attention you've been paying, isn't it? It was a wood. Well, I still couldn't care less. Well, I could. They tried on too often, these farmers. You turn your back on them for a minute, another few miles of footpath somehow get lost. Well, you can't entirely blame them, can you? What about the fool who tosses away a cigarette and casually cremates a few acres of woodland? Mm. Gates being left open, dogs worrying sheep, litter all over the place, broken bottles. Howard and Hilda aren't like that. But some people are. I'm not like that. But some people are. Anne's not like that. Some people are. <laughs> Even you aren't like that. But some people are. Oh, <laughs> right. some people are, but it doesn't alter the fact that decent people have the right to walk public footpaths. Now can you feel the rage beginning to twist your guts out? Oh, good, the shove hateny board's free again. Oh. <laughs> it's beginning to get like a drug with you, you know. Oh, come on, Martin. Get your ape me out and have a laugh. <laughs> it's very nice of you, Martin, to champion our cause, but you really think it's a good idea to come back? How else can we beer the line in his den? <laughs> but he might be at home now having his tea. So? Well, what do we do if he is? We walk the length of the path. But he won't see us. Then we'll walk back again. <laughs> but what if he still doesn't see us? We walk backwards and forwards until he does. Say so he's gone on holiday. Say so we're going on holiday? We didn't talk about holidays. In that case, we can assume... Howard, it's him! 
<laughs> Clear off. Touch your weapon and I take a photograph. <laughs> Who the hell are you? He's with us. Are you two again? No, it's not, because I'm with them. In that case, all three of you. Clear off. Now, see here, my friend. I'm not your friend. All right, just see here. <laughs> According to my friends, and you can see by the very way they hold themselves that they would never lie, <laughs> this is a public football, and we intend to walk it. No, it's not, and you're not going to. So push off. <laughs> You've no idea what my next move is going to be, have you? <laughs> Neither have you. Now push off. I hate threats, but... Mm. Yes. He's not on a lead. No. Does he come when he's called? Sometimes. Martin? Martin? We're going now. I don't think that lets you off the hook because it doesn't. Have we ever talked about getting a dog? Because if we do, I want a big dog. <laughs> what is the biggest dog in the world? <laughs> well, Irish Wolfhound. Yes, they are big, but are they fierce? What are you doing here? He was here before you left. Oh, yeah. So, how'd you get on? We were set on by a dog, that's how we got on. <laughs> There's nothing to laugh at, and it was as big as a horse. Somebody could have been killed. And was it really set on you? All right, pedantic Polly. I'm not saying it was actually set on us, but it did sit there and it did look very nasty. There must be something about this wood. Everyone who goes there comes back a tall storyteller. <laughs> you haven't met the bloke. If ever I saw a man radiate malevolence, it's him. Do you know they call that wood primrose wood? Pretty name. And what's wandering around in it like something out of a horror film? Him. <laughs> did you say primrose wood? Yes. Was the dog a large black Alsatian? Yes. His name's Blossom. <laughs> I know that farmer, as a matter of fact. He's a mate of mine. Oh, yes, he'd have to be. Really. <laughs> and that wasn't real malevolence. He was just trying to scare you. Well, he succeeded. <laughs> I mean, how can you radiate malevolence with a name like Raymond? <laughs> well, you would take his part, wouldn't you? Raymond and Blossom, terrifying. Look, Anne, <laughs> whose side are you on? I'm not on anyone's side. I think the whole thing's ridiculous. Charming. I... <laughs> just a minute, mister, helping yourself to another drink without being asked. <laughs> I've just seen through you. I'm not entirely sure I believe that, Martin. What's the name of the books on the shelf behind me? I mean, I've just seen through your Greenpeace outburst in the pub. What? You're not interested in Gates being left open. He's a mate of yours. It's the Norman Baron sticking together. Keep the honest Saxon off our land at all costs. He's not a Norman. He's a Raymond. <laughs> and who have you cast yourself as, Martin? Harry with the wake. <laughs> all right, put it another way. It's the Greenwelly check cap. Get out of my county. I'm breathing in it, Brigade. The Normans didn't wear check caps in Greenwell. <laughs> I have modernised my argument, Anne. I'm talking about now. Take the Zulu Wars. Were they about footpaths? <laughs> yes, in a way, yes. Do you mean that every time a Howard and Hilda of the day went out for a little stroll, 5,000 Zulus jumped out from behind a hedge and attacked them with their assegais? I mean they're about protecting the British way of life, which includes the right to walk public footpaths without being shot at by Hooray Henrys or savaged by giant dogs. Called Blossom. <laughs> If my appendix suddenly bursts, Anne, and you have to run through those woods to the hospital with me slung over your shoulder and you meet that dog, <laughs> I don't think you'll be laughing at its name then. You had your appendix out four years ago. <laughs> now, please, Martin, don't make an issue of this. There are plenty of other footpaths. No, I'm sorry, I'm very sorry. I've got my teeth into this one. I'm not letting go. And now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to plan my next step in this war of attrition. I wish I could go and live in a hotel for a month. <laughs> Can I come? Don't you stop. <laughs> Sweet sherry, Martin. No, thank you. A lemon curd tartlet. <laughs> no, thank you. Look, all I said was, is it really worth it? I heard all too well what you said, Howard. I am still reeling from the shock. Well, it's not even that nice a footpath. Hilda, if you were a footpath through a sewage farm, I would fight for your right to walk it. 
we don't want to walk it anymore. You do. We don't. You do. <laughs> don't you see there's an important issue at stake here? Yes, I do. Self-preservation. Empty threats with a gun and a dog. You ran away from him. I did not. I walked. Then how did you keep getting in front of us? <laughs> Stride patterns. You ran. You did. Look, it's different this time. I've got a map. And the map clearly shows that there is a footpath there, don't you see? We're armed with right and reason. But what if he won't listen and sets the dog on us? Or shoots us. All right, all right, all right. So he does both. So he sets the dog on us and shoots us. He will never let to stand on. <laughs> but we might be badly injured. So? Well, it hurts. <laughs> and what's more, I will not have my Hilda running the gauntlet in those woods again. Then you come. No, Martin, I won't let him. You're a bigger man than us, Martin. You're made of sterner stuff. Well, yes, that's probably true, but all the same. <laughs> I'll get it. I'm going to tell you something I've never told you before, Howard. Oh? It's to do with the respect and affection I have for you. Oh. You're in my will. <laughs> oh, Martin. But I don't want you to think in any way that I'm using that as a lever over this footpath business. <laughs> Oh, I'm glad I caught you. Anne said you'd be here. I don't repeat anything that's been said in this room to Paul. I'm sorry to say he's in the enemy camp. Well, it's funny you should say that, because I've just gone from the enemy camp, as a matter of fact. I had a word with my mate. He said you can use the footpath whenever you like. Oh. It is a public footpath, you know. Yes, he knew that. He just didn't want hordes of people walking over his land, so he bluffed, that's all. Well, why did he change his mind? What could you have thought of that I couldn't? Well, nothing, probably. But Paul's got so much charm. <laughs> well, thank you, Hilda, but charm had nothing to do with it. I simply told the enemy what sort of man he was up against. <laughs> I told him about you, Martin. Well, that's nice, isn't it? <laughs> I said you were a British bulldog. Did you? Yes. I said if you believed you had right on your side, you'd just go on and on and on with the fight until you'd won. I am like that. I know. And that's what you told him? Yes. You? Yes. Someone I said who is totally unlike anybody else you'd ever meet for the rest of your life. Yes. You are indescribable, Martin. Yes, I suppose I am. Hilda, I think I will have that lemon curd tartlet now, please. <laughs> it's interesting, isn't it? I regain a footpath, and because B now exists, you can get from A to C. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they must have had the same feeling when they completed the Canadian Pacific Railway, I suppose. Do you think it's going to be a good year for dahlias? <laughs> it doesn't seem to matter what the weather is. Howard's pom-poms are always winners. <laughs> you see, there must be hundreds of stolen footpaths in England. I wonder whether I would have said about getting them all back. You'd be spreading yourself pretty thin, Martin. One of Martin's problems, Howard. Not enough of him to go round. Thank you, Paul. Did I show you the map, by the way? It's all that area cross-hatched in purple has been liberated, incidentally. Saxons won, Normans nil, eh, Martin? What? <laughs> Did anyone see that fascinating programme last night about gorillas? Oh, yes. They always look to me as if they're wearing patent leather gloves. You know that huge male? What, the one that came out of the bushes and went, <laughs> He reminded me of Howard. <laughs> you didn't say so at the time. Why does Howard rush out of bushes and go, Ooh, at you, Hilda? <laughs> of course he doesn't. <laughs> well, I hope you don't mean in the hairy sense, Hilda. <laughs> I don't regard myself as an excessively hairy person. No, all I mean is the combination of strength and gentleness. Oh. <laughs> I'm saying... Of course, gorillas have footpaths, you know. Are you sure? Oh, yeah. Do they have little signposts, too? <laughs> they really do, Hilda. I suppose if you took the right away from a gorilla, you'd get the same reaction as you got from me. Good Lord. What? The close is on this map, and there's a footpath, and it goes right through your back garden. <laughs> Rubbish. Well, see for yourself. There. Oh. Right through. I wonder how long that's been there. <laughs> what do you all take me for? Martin, it's on the map. All right, all right, applause, applause for a very good bit of acting all round. Surprise, horror, it's all there. <laughs> all right, then. Well, let's see how you do. <laughs> good grief, there's a footpath through my garden. That's what he said. It's right through my back garden, it's right through Brooks Mead. Just a minute. Did you put this on here? Oh, yes, I've got a midget cartographer in my inside pocket. <laughs> well, of course I do. I only had the map for two minutes. Good 
grief. Well, don't get into a state. There's nothing to worry about. Don't get into a state, he says. Well, could you explain why there's nothing to worry about? Because I'm slightly interested myself. Well, it's obvious. How long have you lived here? Fourteen years. Have you ever seen hordes of people tramping through your back garden? Oh, I see. It's defunct. Nothing to worry about. Of course not. Well done, Paul, for getting things in proportion. <laughs> Just as we were about to get footpathitis again. <laughs> Nevertheless, it is there. The footpath is marked. It is there. But nobody knows it's there, Martin. I do. <laughs> well, Martin, you're not welling up to another crusade, are you? Look at it this way. I have put my life at risk to defend the right of people like Harden Hilda to use a public footpath. <laughs> now I find a public footpath in my own garden. Can I therefore deny Harden Hilda the use of that? We don't want to walk through your back garden, Martin. 300 yards and you're out on the high street. Well, I'm not talking about you personally. I'm talking about all the Howard and Hilders of this world, and there are millions of them. Oh, Martin, just forget you ever saw the map. <laughs> That's impossible. You can't forget you ever saw the map. I could. You can't? You can't? It's like me saying, don't think of an elephant. What do you immediately think of, Howard? <laughs> an elephant. Eh? Well, all right, an elephant. Hilda? A unicycle. You see? <laughs> <laughs> Why? I don't know. I suppose it was you saying, don't think of an elephant, really. <laughs> uh, well, uh, let's forget about elephants for the moment. Now, just be rational. By all means. Rational is my language. I speak rational. <laughs> well, good. Then you'll appreciate this. Now, there's the letter of the law and the spirit of the law. Now, the letter of the law says that may be a public footpath. But surely the spirit of the law says it's no longer in use because it goes through somebody's back garden. Now, who in their right mind would follow the letter of the law? Exactly. Well, well said, Paul. Well yes. I would. <laughs> <laughs> Please, Martin. It's very hard being married to a paragon of virtue. Try to see my point of view. I do, love, but I'm powerless to do anything about it. You're a masochist. No, just someone who reveres the letter of the law. All right, try this. Nobody has mentioned that bloody footpath for 14 years. But if somebody does arrive demanding their right to use it, I will not only escort them through the garden, I'll hold the ladder so they can climb over the back fence. But why advertise? I'm sorry, love, but as it's a public footpath, there has to be a sign. But you didn't have to make it yourself. Not a bad job, does it? Martin, is there some perversity about you that I don't know about? Perversity? Do you actually want people walking through your front garden? I hate the thought, Anne, but right is right. Well, now, if you'll excuse me for a few hours, I've got to make a style. For God's sake, why? I can't have people climbing over our back fence. I could do cream teas. <laughs> cream teas? Love who for? The tourists. Who? The thousands of people are going to come streaming through our back garden. Auntie Anne's cream teas. Might make a bother, too. That would be some compensation, wouldn't it? And then perhaps we could provide a doggy's toilet, a sandpit for the kiddies, litter bins, funny hats, squeakers, candy floss. Well, perhaps nobody will ever turn up. Well, it won't be any thanks to you, will it, Martin? It's a wonder you didn't go round the roads with a loudspeaker van. I am hamstrung, Anne. That's not all you are, Martin. Perhaps nobody will turn up. Well, I've been thinking. What, while you're putting out the signpost to the style? Yes. Perhaps the news will never get out that there's a right of way through here. I've always said we're a close close, but even Paul wouldn't tell anybody. You're clutching at straws. Of course it'll get out. It's bound to. And in the meantime, there's this awful waiting, this awful knowledge that anyone who wants to has the right to walk through my back garden. Well, look on the bright side, love. It won't take them a twinkling to get through it. There's no law that says they have to hurry. They could be there for hours, staring at my washing. <laughs> and I'll be in here. I'd feel like a, a goldfish in a bowl. I could put up some Venetian blinds for you. I like the sunshine. Don't you realise what this means? I won't be able to walk around my own house with no clothes on. Anne, you're not telling me you've ever cooked in the nude. <laughs> I'm including the upstairs. The bedroom looks over the back garden, doesn't it? Good grief, they could see me. Yes. <laughs> we must always remember to keep below the level of the windowsill. Does that mean I have to crawl around in my own bedroom? No, oh, Anne, sticking to a principle is never easy. There are always little peripheral irritants. Peripheral irritants? Now, listen, Martin, I... There's a man in our back garden. Oh, he must be the first. It's begun, hasn't it? Yes. <laughs> what did I tell you? He's nosing about. We have become 
a sideshow. Now, don't let him get to you, Anne. Is your clothing adjusted? Do you want a casserole in your face? Steady, Anne, steady. Anne. <laughs> now, don't look at him, don't look at him. What's he doing now? He's coming towards the house. Oh, no, is he? Oi, 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 oi! That's not your way! He's down the path, over the stile! Don't wave at me, I'm not a goldfish! <laughs> oi! You've strayed! Look, this is private property! I know where his game is. No, you can't use the toilet. I don't need to use the toilet. I'm from the council. The council? Oh, uh, well, you better come in. Thank you. My identification? It's not a very good likeness, is it? Oh, I've never taken a good snap, not even as a child. Oh, hard luck. Now, what can we do for you? Are you the master of the house? Well, I'm not the lodger, if that's what you're inferring. <laughs> very well, very well. Now then, are you responsible for that erection in the front garden? <laughs> yes, I am. Then I must ask you to take it down. Down? Why? It is not an official erection. There's nothing wrong with it. It's nicely made. Oh, it's beautifully made. But it is not an official signpost, is it? Only the council can put signposts up. Oh, I see. I take it down. You put another one up. We're not going to. Why not? We've got our reasons. They've got their reasons, Martin. Well, what are they? Well, when this close was built, let's uh, just say that the council and the developers will... Um, <laughs> Redrew the map. Now, see here. Martin. If there's been any sort of chicanery. Martin, think. Think, Martin. <laughs> Let me put it this way. Are you officially ordering me to take down that signpost, and are you officially telling me that there is no footpath through my garden? I'm empowered, so to do. Well, I'm going to let to stand up. Exactly. We never lose. Good afternoon. Oh, Martin. We're private again. <laughs> yes, but... Now, before you say anything, tell me what you really think. Oh, Anne, I'm so relieved. Aha! <laughs> uh Aha -huh. uh -huh what? Come to your senses, have you? You thought again, didn't you? All those day-trippers wandering through your back garden, you finally got the picture and took the sign down like any sensible person would. Don't you accuse me of being any sensible person? <laughs> I took this sign down for one reason only. The council ordered me to. Believe me, if there was anything I could do, I'd do it. But I'm powerless against the big battalions. I never realized you felt as deeply about this, Martin. Well, I do. Right. That settles it. You know what I'm going to do? Do? As you know, our MPs are mate of mine. Your fight's going to Westminster, Martin. <laughs> If you want a public footpath through your back garden, you're damn well going to have one. No, no, no.